Hi, welcome to the Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to talk about um, the fact that human will is universal. Okay, before we do that, I just want to briefly go over why I'm doing the show, why the show is important, and uh, what we mean by free will, and why simply it's just impossible. It's something that, you know, it's an illusion. It's more of an, an erroneous conclusion, but... Um, but essentially, it's just something that, that just doesn't exist. And to the extent we believe in it, we harm ourselves and our world. Okay. Um, so, when we say we mean that we have a free will, what we mean is that, um, that basically we, we would be free to just choose whatever we wanted, you know, independent of anything. You know, like our choice would be completely up to us. It's, you know... It's, it's something that we're doing on our own, and it's not something that we have to do. You know, nothing, no one's making us do it. No, nothing is compelling us to do it. And that's, that's the illusion. That's the, the idea, the notion of free will. Okay. Um, the reality is that it is an illusion. That's not the way things work. And um, the two basic reasons why it's an illusion is, one, because of the process of causality, because everything has a cause, and, um, and two, you know, it, it's, it's also a causal process, but you can also understand why free will is impossible if, if you consider that we all have an unconscious. And, uh, and the unconscious part of our mind is where all of our data for making decisions is stored. And so if, if the part of our mind that's, that's, that has the data is unconscious to the conscious mind, then, then clearly you can see how the decision has to be made at the level of the unconscious also. All right. Um, so, let's see. Um, I want to get right to this. Okay. Um, basically, there is a, um, one of the reasons this question hasn't been resolved in, you know, a couple of thousand years, um, I think is because, like, the, um, the confusion in termin terminology. I mean, because ordinarily the, the way you usually hear this question framed is it, do we have a free will or it's free will or determinism, okay? It's not like, you know, I mean, sometimes it's like, do we have a determined will? But it's like just um, because it's, it's usually framed as free will versus determinism, you know, the mind can't um, as easily understand how the concepts relate, how determinism or causality relates to human will. You know, so, so basically what... Um, so... So to the extent that we understand that, to, to, under, to the extent that we understand that, um, that the language we use to describe this, to describe the nature of our hum human will, to describe the question we're addressing is important, then I think we'll, we'll make um, some progress on, on understanding it. Okay, so now we're going to go with um, the reason I say human will is... Um, is universal, you know, the title of this show. Um, all right, uh, before I do that, let me just briefly explain um, the causality of, of you know, wh why causality makes free will impossible, and then you can more easily see why our human will is universal. Okay, um, it's simple, you know, I, and, and like, you know, I may have to say it a hundred, a thousand times until um, people really get it, but, but that's all right. This is very new. All right, basically, the, the reason free will is an illusion, a mistake, um, no one has a free will, you know, we're all robots, puppets, <laughs> everything's a movie, is because of this process of causality. And that simply means, it's not complicated, it simply means that everything has a cause. Nothing in the world happens that's not caused. That's... That's axiomatic. You know, I've done shows on this. It's like, you know, cause can be described as change. And so if there was no causality, um, you know, the, the, the universe would be static. So, all right, so the, the idea is like everything has a cause. So that means like if everything has a cause, then you've got like, you make a decision. It doesn't matter what the decision is. Um, it doesn't matter really what caused it, but it has a cause, all right? You, you didn't make the decision for, for no reason. And so, like, all right, it has a cause. Then if everything has a cause, the cause of that decision must have a cause, okay? Um, causes 
always go backward in time. In other words, the cause will always precede its effect. In this case, the cause is preceding the decision. The cause is causing the decision, which is the effect. All right, so like you've got any, any and every decision having a cause, and that cause having a cause, and that cause having a cause. So, you know, you quickly understand that what you, what you have now is a causal regression, a causal chain of, chain of cause and effect, effect going back in time. And um, naturally that goes, you know, if every cause, if every thing that happens has a cause, then you've got this, yeah, <laughs> it goes back to before we were born, before the planet was created. And, and so, all right, that is the basic reason why free will is impossible, why it's like, you know, we're just like acting everything out. You know, it's like we don't decide anything, we just like play it out, like, like a computer program or something. Um, but I want to now like turn to, to the theme of the show. Okay, um, before I do, I just remembered um, this book. I just wrote a book. I just wrote a book. Um, this is pretty cool. Uh, it's called Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. And see, I had wanted, all right, this is, I, I'm going to do a whole show on this, but I want to do this because, like, it's new. Um, one of the reasons I know that I don't have a free will is, like, back in 1997, I tried to write a book on explaining why free will is an illusion. And I got about maybe, I don't know, 40, 50 pages into it. And, you know, for, for various reasons, it just didn't happen after that. I, you know, I went into an editing process, and I don't know. I don't know what happened. But anyway, um, so, like, so what I, I wanted to write a book because um, with this question, you know, let me tell you something. There are very, 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 very few books out there on this topic. Um, you know, kind of like a handful that get it right. I mean, there's, 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 a, 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 there's a lot of books on it that get it wrong. You know, it's kind of like a curious kind of thing. Um, most, a lot of, most philosophers that write on this, I think, get it wrong, which is interesting. But, but anyway, um, there are very few books on, on human will. And this, you know, and you know, the thing is, like, my purpose is to, like, disseminate this information, to get people to understand this. So, like, you know, um, I uploaded this, this book. You can find this book online digital for free. Download it in PDF and, you know, just, like, you know, read it for free. I mean, like, you know, the, the hardcover is cool. But anyway, what I did, what I did is, like, I... Um, this is basically, I transcribed the first 18 episodes that I did of this show. And, um, and it's very cool. It's about 164 pages. I think, you know, with this version, you know, whether you read online, whatever, um, here's the thing. Um, I started transcribing. Yeah, I, I want to talk about this. <laughs> this human world thing, whatever. Um, I started transcribing, I think, in mid-October. Um, Okay, because basically, you know, I, I bought this transcribing machine that, um, you know, it's a, a foot pedal thing. So, like, you know, you press one pedal, it goes uh, forward. Then you press another pedal, it'll go back five seconds. It's very cool. So, like, so, all right, I started mid-October. Then I wanted to kind of, like, get the book done for my nieces and nephews. I wanted to give them, give them the, the book for Christmas, you know. So, like, so then, I, or Hanukkah, whatever. <laughs> but, um, so, you know... I um I published it December second, which is one of my nieces um my niece Rachel's uh, birthday, so um and it was pretty easy. It was a month and a half of work. I mean, it was a lot of work though. But but anyway, with this with this version, because because I recognize the causal nature of reality and that I don't have a free will, and there there are things that could have happened that ha might have prevented me from publishing the book, and because I you know I find. This little book, you know, I say it in the book, I say this book can and probably will change the world um, because it describes the matter so clearly, so, so comprehensively, so repeatedly <laughs> in so many different ways that it's very diff it's, it would be difficult for a person to read the book and not understand that, that free will is impossible, you know. So... Um, but, but, all right, but the thing is, because I, I kind of, like, was, um, you know, became, like, you know, I guess caught up in the, the significance of the work. I just wanted to publish it soon. Um, so the thing is, like, it's not edited or proofread as well as it could be. I mean, it's, there's not, like, it's not like there's mistakes on every page and stuff, you know. Um, 
I did, you know, I edited it once, you know, with the proofreading at the same time. But, but anyway, it, it's an excellent, excellent, excellent book. And I, I'm going to devote an entire episode to it because, uh, you know, I'll go through the chapters. And, and the cool thing about it is, yeah, it, um, you know, somehow I didn't plan the book out naturally because it's the first 18 episodes, but, but apparently, um, you know, and these epi episodes were done within the course of, what, um, 18 weeks because I, I tape an average of, of um, an episode a week. So, so there wasn't really like, you know, it's not like I planned out the book. It's very serendipitous the way it just came together. It wasn't about me, which is, you know, so cool because that's what the theme of the show is, <laughs> you know, whatever happens in that. Um, so, like, yeah, so it's, 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 it's cool. That the book was really planned, you know, um, by the universe very, very clearly. All right, back to this. Uh, we've got about 16 seconds, or 16 minutes. All right, so... Now we get we get that um, that causality makes free will impossible. If everything has a cause, and every one of our decisions has a cause, and every cause of our decision has a cause, and that clearly explains it. But see, that might confuse um, some of us. It might confuse us in general because, like, you know. People say, all right, well, what is the cause of that decision? Now, you know, I, it's not, it doesn't matter that everything has a cause. People ask, what is the cause? And sometimes it could be like more than one cause. Like, for example, um, oh, um, well, what's, what's, what's causing me to, to say what, I, what I'm saying right now? One, you know, the knowledge that I have. Two, motivation to do this. Three, you know, commitment to do the show. You know, various, there are various causes. And so, like, when you get into like individual quote unquote causes, that confuses the matter a bit. So what we what the value of this show is, we're going to move from just ex explaining causality as as a concept, you know, as a principle that that governs everything, to applying this principle to to what is actually causing everything. Okay, and here's the thing. Okay. Um, the universe, we've got one universe. You know, sometimes people talk about multiverses, but that's actually, you know, if there were more than one universe, um, they would be part of, of one. In other words, you can't have two things in nature. You've got to have, like, they've got to be part of the, the whole. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> the whole. <laughs> so, um, all right. So you've got a universe. And that, and the reason... Using the universe to explain human will is important is because the universe is everything, seen, unseen, heard, unheard, you know, known, unknown, okay? It's everything that exists, okay? And so what happens? The universe evolves from moment to moment. Causality, again, if, if there wasn't causality applied to the universe, the universe would sta be static. Nothing would move. We'd all be frozen, you know. We, you know, we wouldn't exist naturally as human beings because this, like, you know, this body and mind we have evolved over time through a lot of changes. But, um, but anyway, um, all right. So, like, so you've got, um, you've got this, um, the universe that is everything. And the way, let's, let's start off at the Big Bang, okay? Um, because we don't know what happened before that, you know. That's, that's the limit of our knowledge, you, you know. And we're kind of like, in a certain sense, speculating about the nature of the Big Bang, but we kind of, um, evidence seems clear that, you know, there was a kind of like a, a dense formulation of matter, you know, 13.7 billion years ago, I, I think. Um, so, all right, you've got this, the universe at the time of the Big Bang, okay? Then you ask yourself, well, what cause... What's, um, what causes the next moment, okay? Because, you know, um, you have to realize the universe is comprised of mass, matter, um, mass energy, um, stuff, <laughs> things <laughs> moving through space in time, okay? That's all it is. That's what's happening. We've got stuff moving, and naturally um, causality or, or change is responsible for the movement. So you've got... You know, if you've got the, 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 the entire universe at the Big Bang, then you ask yourself, all right, what is causing the, um, the state of the universe, the universe, everything, at the next moment? 
The answer is obvious. There's only, there can only be one answer. It's like the universe operating under causality, operating under the, the fact that, that there is motion, that things move, that things change. So that you have the, the state of the universe at the Big Bang completely determining the state of the universe at the next moment. Okay, because that's all, that's all there is to determine it, you know? That's all there exists, you know? You've got the universe, you know, and, and, and the universe naturally, every particle, every, you know, everything in it, you know? So you have, at, at the Big Bang, it's at one, it's at one state. At the next moment, it changes to an, another state. Same universe, it's changing, okay? Matter is moving to different positions. That's basically what's happening. All right, so um, why is this... Um, maybe perhaps a better way of, ex of explaining um, the nature of our human will than, than going th with simple causality or with the unconscious, perhaps, it, it's because it, it encompasses everything, okay? The universe is all there is. So, so you know, this, this idea that we have a universal will, it's the most complete, accurate, comprehensive, general description of human will possible, you know? The universe is what makes us do everything we do. You know, we don't have a free will, then we have a universal will. Okay, our, our will is universal. Okay, um, so let's see. Um, okay, now why is this important? Again, I mean, think about it. Like, I mean, just, just you know, we don't have a free will. We're just like, we're, we're robots, puppets, mannequins, um, you know, call us actors, you know. Uh, I like to refer to us as instruments of God, you know, because basically if we define God as, as like being everywhere, then God is the universe. That's my conception of God, at least, you know, scientific conception. And so like, you know, we, we, we're basically, if we have a universal will, we have a God's will. You know, God is basically... Um, doing her, his will through us. And so, um, so what does that do? You know, when, when we see our human will as universal, and again, I want to stay, I want to keep this secular. I'll do religious shows on this, but, you know, the, the, the main thrust of the show is that, um, that logic, science, reason, facts, you know, um, refute free will and, and, you know, make it impossible. But, um, Okay, when, when we believe we have a free will, then what happens is that it's kind of like, in a certain sense, it's like we're believing that we're like gods. You know, we're believing that we can like, we can like transcend, circumvent, overcome, sidestep the laws of nature. You know, because like, it's the law of nature. Causality is the law of nature. That's what present, prevents us from... Um, from having a free will, from, from willing, from deciding what we want regardless of anything, you know. Um, so what happens is, yeah, when, when we go under the free will perspective, then we are all individuals separated from each other, from others, and separated from everything else. And, you know, that causes a lot of conflict, that causes a lot of blame when things go wrong, it causes arrogance when we do something right and somehow we feel we're better than others, um, causes envy when others do um, something good and we attribute that goodness to their doing rather than the universal will. It causes a lot of problems. And so to the extent that we, um, to the extent that we understand that human beings have a universal will, we become one. It unifies us. It, um, we're no longer on different sides of, let's say, a disagreement or, or, or any kind of like um, opposition. It's like, you know, rather than, rather than blaming ourselves and each other for, for what we and others will invariably do wrong, because, you know, because we can't help it, because we don't have a free will, because if we had a free will, we wouldn't do anything wrong. So rather than doing that, we would be on the same side. We would be saying to ourselves, wait a minute, you know, why is the universe compelling us to kind of like, let's say, disagree or, 
why is the universe com compelling me to think that, that you did something wrong or that I did something wrong? You know, and again, you, you, the value of that is like it takes the mind from from accusation mode, you know, to problem solving mode. Because once once you um, dispense with the um, who did what, you know, then you can get to why perhaps. And it's only guess. You know, we can only we can't know why the universe, you know, makes us do what what we do. I mean, like. Um, within certain parameters we can, like for example, we have a hedonic imperative. So in other words, the universe has compelled us to whatever we do, seek pleasure and avoid pain. That's the basic drive we have. Um, but in general, yeah, in general, like, you know, what the universe has us do, we, 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 we can't really know why. Um, maybe, maybe eventually we will. But okay. Um, now, okay, I want to go into why this is important um, to our future. Um, you know, this is, I'm taping this, I think, um, December 6th, 2011, and, or 12, I'm, January 6th, 2012, okay, a new year. And, um, and here's, the th here's what we're facing, you know, here's what we're facing. We're facing the, um, in the spring, you know, when the weather gets um, warmer, we're facing the, the revolution of the 99%, you know, against the 1%. Basically, um, what, what started happening last year in, in the Middle East has now come to the United States and to Europe, and basically it's the 99% of people saying, no, we, don't, we no longer want to be un justly, unfairly ruled by a small population, and we don't no longer want a very small population to have a very inordinate um, percentage of the wealth and resources. So, um, this is major. This is major. I mean, like, you know, over the holidays, we kind of like really, you know, put it to the side to enjoy the holidays, but, but it, it's going to happen. You know, I mean, it would, I would think it would happen. I mean, like, you know, it seems inevitable pretty much. And, and so the thing is like, all right, if we're operating under a free will perspective, it's like those bad one percenters are evil, you know, and they're going to think, well, we're evil for trying to take their power and money, you know, the one, uh, and so you, you can understand how this kind of like um, this, this transition we're going through, you know, is, is, um, is fraught with potential um, adversity, potential um, conflict okay but you know to the extent to the extent that we can like understand we can all understand hopefully quickly that no free will is an illusion they're like fine we may have to um take the money and power from the one percent but we we it would be wrong it would be insane illogical to blame them and and they would say to themselves fine they um they may have to take our money, they may, you know, taxes, whatever, um, creating a new government, a new country, whatever, a new world. Um, the 1% wouldn't blame us either. Okay, so like, so we're doing this without the blame, and think about it. If you're doing something, if, if, we're, if we're saying to the 1%, listen, you know, it's not about you. We're not blaming you. To, you know, it's, you, nothing that you did was up to you so even though some of it was wrong like for example ignoring the climate and just like oh god so much is wrong i mean like <laughs> got to get into it um 30,000 kids dying every day of poverty because the rich just you know want to have too much money just you know don't care about equality the one percent mainly mainly um you've got like you know our our food industry you know the way that we treat animals you know um cattle and pigs and chickens I mean it, it's horrible we torture them it's horrible and um, so naturally it's the one percent who who, um, who are responsible for like with their inordinate power and all for for these policies you know to the extent that um, that we don't have to blame them for that then then again you know it, it's you can see how it'll be easier it should be easier to navigate this this brave new world we're, we're suddenly creating um, as we understand that, um, you know, human will is universal, um, our wills are causal. Okay. Um, so, and, and that's, I, I think that's important to say, I mean, cause like, you know, um, 
sometimes ideas have their utility over decades. Um, this, this idea certainly will have, you know, continue to, to be um, powerful. It's, it's like the most important, most powerful, I think, idea ever. <laughs> it's true. I, mean, I got to do another show. I've done shows on this because it's like, you know, because if we, if we believe that we have a free will, we're seeing things completely opposite of the way they are. And that's, that's <laughs> insane. But um, so, yeah, so like we have this, um, we have this, you know, human will that's, um, that apparently, you know, apparently, I'm, what, what, I'm, uh, I, I, I lost my train of thought. I mean, we got about like two minutes left. So I want to wrap it up. Um, so how do I want to finish this? Um, I'm going to do a commercial. Okay. Wednesday nights, 11 o'clock, uh, we're doing a show in Manhattan. It's called Myth Free Will or The Myth of Free Will, whatever. Uh, it's live. It's call-in, okay? Um, my friend who wants to be known as a messenger and I do this. We've been, we've been doing this for, like, I guess about 10 weeks already. We're going into the next quarter. Um, the next quarter actually starts... Um, Actually, no, it started already. <laughs> but uh, but we're, 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 officially premiering, we're officially premiering on um, the 18th, January 18th. But, I mean, that's because, like, I mean, this, this show, you know, has a... Um, I mean, being in White Plains, let me tell you something. Um, White Plains, this area, a lot of, like, people who, who kind of, like, you know, work in the city and who, you know, are responsible for things happening, live around here. So this this is an important market, but the Manhattan market is like 1.5 million, not viewers, but people. But that's got to translate to a lot of cable viewers. So anyway, <laughs> that's, that's commercial. All right, running out of time. I hope you understand now that, like, that uh, it's the universal will is the best way of, um, the most accurate way of describing human will, okay, and that the matter is, very important, you know, f to our welfare, so that we stop fighting with each other, stop blaming each other, stop fighting with ourselves, and start creating a much, much more pleasant world. Again, you know, with the, with the book, it's like, you know, it's online for free. Just download the PV PDF. Just if It's the Google Books. Go to Google Books. All right, well, I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you next time in Exploring Illusion and Free Will. Thanks.